Hi everyone, it's Kathy from To Die House. Um, today is Saturday, March 20th, 2021. It is the first day of spring. And you are probably saying to yourself, well, where the heck have you been? Um, if you're new here, it's been a while since I've done a video. The last video I did was March of last year. Um, uh, but if you've uh, been here all along, hello again and welcome back. And if you're new, Welcome in. We're back in my craft room. You can see maybe that um, I've had some additions. Shocker. I know. Um, but yeah, it's been a hot minute. I lost my video juice. I mean, no excuse. I just didn't feel like doing it. I just lost my mojo. That was ha that's been happening a lot. But I do sort of feel like my mojo is gaining momentum again. So that's why I'm here. Um... And I'm back. So again, welcome back to everyone who's been with me for a while. If you're new, welcome. Uh, I have some whips for you. I have three big finishes. I have some haul. If I showed you a year's worth of haul, you'd never <laughs> want to watch it again. So I'll show you a little bit of, of my haul, mostly from what I, I picked up uh, today when I went to Needleworkers Delight. The group that uh, I meet up with on a weekly basis, twice a week, a bunch of us met up at Needleworkers Delight. We were all masked up. Most of them have had at least their first round of vaccinations. I have not. I'm still trying to get an appointment to get one. Um, Darren is doing well. And for those of you who are new here, Darren's my significant other. Um, he has been, he's got his first round of vaccine underneath his belt. So he, he in a few weeks, will get his second dose. And I'm just hunting online for a vaccine appointment. Um, and um, I'm still able to work from home. So I do sort of feel like as much as I'd like to have one, especially for events like today when we were all getting together and trying to maintain our social distance. But <clears throat> I mean, let's be honest, we weren't six feet apart. <laughs> but um, but it's at least they are protected. I'm a little nervous, but I'll get over it. Um, but yeah, I I just think that there are people in the population right now who are much more vulnerable than I am. And um, I feel like if they can get the vaccine first, then please give it to them. Because I, I this is the first time I've been out of the house since like December. I went down to Needleworkers in December, um, met up with a friend there briefly, um, she was on her way home from work and happens to live in the area and stopped in and um, but yeah I've been really keeping I've been I've been a homebody like to the point of almost hermit like to, today when I had to get up and take a shower there was part of me that was like yes life life and there was part of me that was like you mean you have to leave the house uh, I don't know if we want to do this so once I got over my actually once I got in the shower and I got going I was raring to go and it's a beautiful day, first day of spring. Temperatures are like in the mid 50s, mid to high 50s. And I was so happy to be in the car with the sunroof open and my radio blasting. And I just needed that hour, a little over an hour each way ride um, to myself. It did me a world of good. Uh, I used to be a commuter and I had quite a long commute. so. Uh, I really enjoyed my time in my car with my tunes. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this pretty short. I'm going to keep it sort of to the basics. I'm not going to get into anything uh, too huge just because I need to get kind of get back in the swing of things. I'm going to try and start doing videos again on a monthly basis now that my mojo feels like it's back. I hope it stays longer than a week. Last time it was like I felt like doing a video and then pfft, nothing. So, okay, my stitchy meetup group. Um... In order to keep things a little more interesting during our Zoom meetings, my friend Tonya, I think it was Tonya, uh, thought about doing, I'm pretty sure it was Tonya, thought about doing um, like a, a stitchy bingo thing. So she assigned us each a bingo card for anybody who wanted to participate. You put in whatever projects you wanted in each space. When she called the number every Saturday night, you grab that project or if it was a project you had already completed, then um, you could substitute in another project. Um, or you know, we were very lenient. 
if it was something you're like, I don't feel like stitching on that, I'll stitch on something else. Didn't matter what you're stitching on, you just had to get your st stitches into something. So, um, but the idea was sort of to drive projects to get them done. Um, so when you call the number, if you had it, you picked up the project, you put in 200 stitches, posted before and after photos in our Facebook group, in our private Facebook group, and I won the first round of bingo. Now, I think we started it maybe August or September, could have been October too. Um, so it's been going on for a while, but I, I won the first round of bingo, which was a lot of fun. So for anybody who's been here for a while, you know, one of my really early videos, I entered a bunch of things in the farmer's fair and I actually, I got a ribbon, right? So, and if you recall, I tortured Darren with the whole trophy thing because he was like, he was kind of razzing me about like, oh, you thought you got the trophy, but it wasn't yours. But then it turned out to be mine, right? So the trophy was following him around. It was going, he, the trophy would be in his car or by the coffee place or on his side of the bed. It's in one of my earlier videos. Anyway, so I won the bingo. And let's say history repeats itself because I got a trophy for the bingo. Tonya, this just makes, this checks all the boxes. It makes my heart go bitter pat. But it's our Let's Stitch Together Bingo-Rama winner. So, I'm... <laughs> now, you know, the minute I walked in the door after I got home from New York Workers today, I was like, and look who's a champion again. He was not amused. But yeah, so I think uh, Bingo Trophy is going to be making the rounds. Let me put this down so it doesn't fall. Uh, yeah, Bingo Trophy is going to be making the rounds again. <laughs> it's like one of my missions in life to torture him. But he secretly loves it. Okay, um, and then the other thing is I had a birthday a few days ago. And my friend D, hi D, uh, also part of our stitchy group gave me, um, no, I got a promotion at work. So, um, she sent me this card. Congratulations. I just, <laughs> it's the essence of me, this card. <laughs> totally me. It's like, I think it's, I think the photo, yep, it's the Beatles. It's the Beatles. And you know how much I love the Beatles, right? I'm all over it. Speaking of, oh, we'll go with that later. Also, I have no script, so I'm completely firing at random. Sorry, but once I get back into the swing, I'll take notes and organize myself a little better. So, she gave me this card, which I love, and this beautiful fabric. And then um, she gave me, for my birthday, the Baby It's Cold Outside mug. Now, I have one of the Beth Twist mugs, but I have the, uh, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things mug. Ooh, look at that light. Um, but she knows um, how close I am with Barb and how close I was with Leanne, or friend, at least very friendly with them, and she thought this was a nice commemoration of that relationship, and she's spot on, knocked it out of the park. So thank you so much, Dee. It really... Hit me in all the feels. Okay, so that's from Stitchy Meetup today. And I gotta say, um, you know, we're... For as difficult as this past year has been, I think try to think about it in terms... Of, and sometimes it's just to comfort myself. I try to think of it in terms of like, yeah, but what would it have been if we didn't have Zoom? Like if we couldn't still get together? Or we didn't have Facebook where we could, you know, cheer each other on online or Instagram or, um, and also that broadens your world outside of your immediate circle. So, um, so yeah. And then my friend Lori, oh, hang on, let me go grab it. My friend Lori, my friend Lori Chicolone, who, um, she is at Once Upon a Stitch. I'll link her below. She is just the sweetest, nicest person you will ever meet. 
Um, and we have several of those in our group. I am not one of them. I'm snarky and sarcastic. Um, she sent me this card, and when I opened it up, I was like, oh, Lori. Even Darren said, he's like, it's like somebody took a picture of you in the morning and put it on a card. It was just like a cheer you on card. This little girl, first step coffee, holding her laptop, making her way into the morning. And then inside, um, it says step two, change the world. So she, um, it just, it's the best. Uh, I'm telling I guess I'm very readable. People really know me. Okay. Um, so let, oh. And I have something, a new hobby that I, all right, I'm a novice. We'll get into it later. Um, what have I been doing? Okay, I've been stitching. Let's start with whips. Let's start with whips. So, um, one of my whips, I just started this, this was... Uh, a it's my Sunday stitch, although it's being temporarily replaced by something else. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but one of the things I've been working on is Fox and Rabbit, Charlotte Mills, and the little bit, a little bit of story behind this is that it's a beautiful sampler, and I wanted to stitch it. But when you look really close at the border. Do you see the surprise visitor in the border? And that is because my friend Teresa, hi Teresa, um, she and I have this thing about Pennywise. I don't know. So I am stitching this with all the called for colors on, um, this is where I'm at. It's on a 40 count dark, it's kind of washing out, there we go. 40 count dark cobblestone from uh, Silk Weaver. I don't think this is one that they dye. I think this comes this way from Zweigert. I don't think they dye it. I could be wrong. Um, but that's where I am so far. There. Ha! Huh. Extra set of hands. So down here, I started to turn the corner and made a counting error somewhere here. So I needed to pull that all out. And I got a little frustrated. I will tell you, I started this a couple months ago. I'm not making fast progress on this. Um, with my last Sunday stitch, which I'll show you during my finishes, um, I was able to always, every Sunday, make significant progress. This one's moving much slower. Um, and I'm not sure why. It's not that it's terribly difficult. I think it's just that maybe because there's a lot of color change in it. So that is Charlotte Mills 1844. Um, the fabric choice totally... Emily C. inspired. Um, she has such an impeccable eye, and I'll link her below as well. Talk about just a talent and a gift for color. She, it's incredible. Every time she, I watch her videos, and she holds something up, and I'm like, knocked it out of the park yet again. She's just amazing. Also, if you like cats, her cat Buster is the sweetest boy. Thank you. He'll hold up something and he'll he's purring the whole time you can't purring but he'll also look at it like oh, that, that's quite interesting that's very pretty he is the most expressive face of a cat i've ever seen okay so that's charlotte mills second whip um i started this I think I started this last summer, but it is um, apropos and continues to be relevant, very relevant, especially now. Well, especially all the time lately. It's just um, and justice for all by Blackbird Design. It's an oldie. It is circa, doesn't say. Hmm. Not sure. Anyway, 
Justice for All, Blackbird Design. My love of Blackbird continues. I'm doing it on... Um, it's a Victoria Motto fabric, and she didn't name her fabrics. Um, but that's where I'm at. So I don't work, I, I actually had this on my bingo board, and that was, I started it as part of the bingo, um, activity that we were doing, and it didn't come up a whole heck of a lot, but when I pick it up, I really love working on it. But it's just, it's kind of a slow go, again, because I'm not devoting a whole lot of time to it. It's just sort of a here and there type of thing. But, you know, love it. Can't wait to get it done. So there's that. And I have it in this beautiful, I'm using, the colors I'm using are Midnight. The blue is the Midnight. The black is, what is the black? The black is Black Crow and the red is, uh, those are both Gentle Arts and then the red is um, Coloring Cotton Garnet. Rusty, right? Out of practice. Moving on. Um, one other... <laughs> it's an abandoned whip because it has to be restarted. So, one of the things I started as part of our bingo was the So Much Fun banner series from Kathy Haberman. And I love it. I'm using all the called for. I'm using this pretty, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but it's very, it's the iridescent white. I got that at Needleworkers. And here are all the called fours for it. Very pretty. But what I ran into was I like the color in the photo. Like, right side up, Kat. Um, you know, that sled looks kind of dark. The mittens look kind of dark. Like, I really liked that color. But when I stitched it, the call fours came up peachy. So you can see there's definitely... A difference between these colors and these colors right and it's a dye lot thing it happens it's no big deal or maybe it's a photography thing too um, but when I looked when I finished the first banner I was kind of like you know I do like the darker colors so what I tried to do to fix it was I dumped the whole thing in coffee um, but it didn't do the trick so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start fresh again. But this time I'm going to try to match more of the colors in the uh, photo. So the the blues are fine. It's just really the skis and, and the dark brown mittens uh, that I wanted something a little more rusty. Like a darker rust as opposed to a peachy color. So no harm, no foul. Redo. <laughs> Um, this is a little itty bitty Chessie and me. Let me take this out of here. It's Chessie and me, Ghost Inn. And it it's a kit. It comes with the silks and everything. And this is where I am at. Now again, this was on the bingo. So I made some progress on it. Not a whole lot, but it's going back on my next bingo board. So, isn't it cute? It's very teeny. So it's a really good little, like, pillow size. But that's where I'm at. Um, also on my bingo board. Is uh, Country Cottage Peppermint Lean. Country Cottage Lean works. Peppermint Lean. And this is where I am at. 
Nothing is pressed. I'm a hot mess. That's where I've gotten with that. I just thought of something. Random thought. Okay. Uh, then in my stitchy group, um, one of our folks, Helen, hi Helen, um, sent us this adorable chart for the blue moon that occurred in 2020 with a whole letter about the blue moon and she did a lot of research on it. Um, but the chart is the Calico Confectionery Once in a Blue Moon. So that is the chart. And it was sort of like you had until the blue moon, the first blue moon, to finish it. <clears throat> or the next one's like in 30 years. Um, but you can stitch on it, you know, during full moons and stuff. So this um, I put aside after my initial soiree into it. Now this is the chart. I changed the colors because I like more prim colors. And this is where I am at. But this is where I'm at. So I have the cat and the pumpkin done. And these are my called for, or not the called for. These are the, my colors that I've selected. So I'm trying to stick to, I think like, like the um, pumpkin stem I did not do in blue. I did that in a green. So I'm making some changes. Um, and obviously the fabric and everything. I didn't use the called for fabric. But my plan is for 2021 to stitch this, put some stitches in this every full moon. Um, and it happens on a monthly basis. So I'm going to have to schedule that out. <gasps> Speaking of scheduling, I got this today. This is like, this is hall interlude. Um, I got this today. I had not planned on getting it. I got one before and I never used it. And I was like, yeah, I can show my money on other things. Um, but I ended up at Needleworkers getting the Book of Days. And I don't think I'm going to go into the whole um, sticker fun portion of it. But I do think what I will do is go in here and mark for the rem remainder of the year every time there's a full moon. So I know I can schedule that in. And you're probably like, slow down, cat. But it's been 10 months. <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> okay. There will be editing. I can feel it coming. Next week. I started this a long time ago, and then it sat. And I didn't do anything with it. And all of a sudden, it just yelled at me, like, come and get me. So, um, my friend Kim, uh, Crafty Kim in Canada, and I will link her below as well. She is doing this one over one, but on like a 20 workout. She's using a hard anchor fabric, I think. It's gorgeous. Hers is gorgeous. Um, mine is on the called for. So it's on an antique uh, ivory, even though it does look a bit whiter in this photo. So this is Country Cottage, or not Country Cottage, Rosewood Manor, Cornwall Cottage Sampler. And that's the piece. Now my friend Lori from Once Upon a Stitch is also doing this piece. And her husband was like, the handle, I don't know. Like, leave out the handle just make it a basket of flowers and I love that idea so I think I'm going to also use that suggestion just do the basket at the bottom remove the handle and just have a nice little basket of flowers in the middle so this is where I am at I'm sure I'm breaking all the rules but you know what there aren't any rules because it's a hobby you're supposed to enjoy it <laughs> meaning I'm leaving needles and everything uh, whatever um so this is where I'm at with that. So you can see I have a dangling thread. Um, so here are the colors in that one. And they're all Wheat Styleworks colors.
All right. So that is Cornwall Cottage. Darren just got up from a nap and walked down the hall and he's like, here we go again. Do you have any, any other suggestions on how I, I can torture him? Let me know. I'm pretty creative, though. I drive him pretty nuts. He drives me nuts, too, though. Okay. This is a newer whip, one that I just started. Actually, I'll do, I'll do my two newer ones at the end. <clears throat> this one uh, on my bingo board is Halloween Quaker. So that's where I'm at on Halloween Quaker. And then this is um, it's been a whip for a long time. It's a stitch long that I started with Barb from Lost and Foss. It's after the roses and I'll put the hashtag below. It's after the roses, S-A-L, hashtag after the roses, S-A-L. Um, I started this with her a while back. When I say a while back, is it like, might have been like a year ago. Uh, so it's an ink circles design. Here is the chart. I saw somebody else on Instagram. Let me just finish this. And here is where I'm at. So here's the scoop with this one. Um, I'm doing this on, I want to say rue green and every, now see, this is where my card, rue green. 36 Count Root Green by Silk Weaver. So I am more than halfway done, although I recognize that I missed that little spot there. If I can fill that in. So. My ring light's really washing that out. Hang on just a minute. Okay, that's, well, it's, a little, it's still washing it out. But that is a little better. But it's this kind of like paley green color. So what I've decided is because this has been going on for a year and I started that Charlotte Mills one recently, I've decided to switch this out as my Sunday stitch until it's completed and then I'll go back to Charlotte Mills. And I will work on Charlotte Mills uh, during the week in the interim as I can, but I really wanted to get this one done. So that's the scoop with that. Um, I just received the, the Jelly Bean Jubilee uh, book from Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle. And I am working on this gal down here, Easter. Kitted from Stash, totally. And this is where I'm at. She's cute, right? Her little... Her little plaid dress it's adorable uh, the other two that I'm planning on doing or would like to do it may be it I probably won't get to them before this Easter but I'm gonna keep this in my whip pile and try and crank out one or two of them um, the other two that I'm doing are I don't know if you can see it down in this corner here this little guy the the boy and the girl chick pulling the wagon and carrots and then in the middle, on the back, the bunny on the bowl of jelly beans with the jelly bean growing out. So those are my three immediate <clears throat> from this book. And um, I also did get, I don't have it as part of my haul stack here, um, but I did get the love notes uh, chart from, from Brenda Gervais. And they're just darling, really darling little charts. Quick stitches, finish mint pillows, Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. And then my most recent start, which was just a few days ago, like I said, from my birthday, 
uh, something I just heard of. I love it so much. Um, and also, um, the fact that I was completely encouraged by Betsy Klager, who I will link below. She knows I'm a Beatles fan. I am. You can see right there. This one. The other way. The other way. Here we go. This guy. Um, that's a tiny modernist blackbird. That says blackbird singing in the dead of night. Um, you know that I did Yellow Submarine from this Blackbird series. So this is the Magical Mystery Tour series. And the one that I started a few days ago is Octopus's Garden. Now, I once again, just like with Yellow Submarine, it, it was stitched. The called for a cedar plank, the fabric. And I was like, I don't want gray. I want a happy little ocean garden, ocean octopus garden. So... Um, I'm stitching this on 36 count. It was a solo die by Silk Weaver, so it doesn't have a name. But this is where I'm at. Now, the waves are um, a gassed color called Deep Sea. Most of the other colors, though, are called for, so I may have to switch them out as I come across them if I feel that they're not, you know, really effective in the piece. But I try to stick to at least the original color palette with the exception of the waves and then the words here as well. Um, and over in this corner, along with the date, I will also do in the deep sea. Um, this is a new finish, but it's not an FFO. I'll put that over here. Previous finishes. Uh, Audrey from Stitch Witch 42 again, link her below. I had posted a picture of the FF, FFO piece that I had done online, um, but this is the negative of the, the FFO. So I'm going to uh, finish that. But this was a freebie chart from Primitive Hair, and I think it's called Lucky Shamrock. So, and I just, so this is a previous finish. And then for the pillow, I just used um, some pretty green fabrics. I did a yo-yo with a button. On the back, I have another different green fabric. And then I just put, my friend D was so gracious. When you order charms, share them with your friends because you get tons of them. Um, so I just, you know, I did the Lori Holt method of doing a slip, covering it up with some felt, adding a pin with the date. There's a little sun and rainbow on there. So I have that, I have a now a two-tier tray thing because everybody does. <laughs> um, so that's a previous finish. It's going in the two FFO pile. The other previous finish that I have to FFO, and there's no time like the present because it is spring, and this is a Rosewood Manor. So I'm going to try and get that FFO'd within the next week. The next one, I don't know who this is. I want to say Heart and Hand, but I'm not sure that it is. I stitched this a while back the bunny. I think maybe I left this in the FFO pile because I was having trouble finding fabric that I wanted to finish it with. Um, maybe I'll do a flat fold on that one. Make him a little stand up. And then this was uh, Bent Creek. I think I showed this to you last time. The chicken and egg. It's so cute. It's, I had this chart or this kit for years and I finally stitched up. But yet, I have not fully finished it. It's been sitting for almost a year. Cute, right? Okay. And then the one that I just finished a few days ago, again, not pressed, but is also in the two FFO pile, is the uh, new one from Kathy Haberman, the Hop On In. Really cute, fast stitch. I used um, like a chalkboard color 
fabric. I didn't use a black. So it was a little easier on my eyes, easier for me to see. Um, and when I did order this chart, I did get the bunting fabric, I think call it bunting fabric, to go with it, to finish it with. So, and that was my first time, this uh, took sulky threads. I had never stitched with sulky threads before. Um, and they're nice, they give you a nice coverage. They knot up a little too easily, but um, it's workable. It's not anything that's gonna stop you from moving forward. So, hop on in, Kathy Haberman. Okay. My octopus's garden card. Better go back in the octopus's garden bag. Speaking of which, remember this bag? I love this bag to this day. And it's so appropriate. Mermaids. Cocktails. Look at the cat mermaid. The little fish in his cocktail. Uh, Barbara from my group, my stitching group, I bought the fabric. She made it into a, a bag for me. This. Love it. Okay. FFOs. <clears throat> so I just showed you this one. Oh, no, finish this. Sorry. Out of practice. The title of, of my video, I think I put big finish, big finish, big finish. And that's because I had three big finishes last year. So the first one I showed you um, is from, <laughs> you're going to be like, Finally, she's finished it. The first one is from By the Bay Needle Arts. Now I don't have, I haven't sent this out for framing yet. Um, I hear a lot of good things about total framing, so I'm thinking that I will maybe um, try and. Oh, how am I going to do this? This thing is huge. Okay, um, I'm just going to hold it up and hope it works. So it's By the Bay Needle Art. There we go. Okay, so. I got all of the 12 panels done. Now, I think you remember in the middle, there's um, on the charts, there's a boy and girl in the middle. I took those out and just stitched straight across uh, with whatever color was running through that area. So, and I took the, there were charted birds like cranes and things, but the proportions of them were throwing me off, so I took those out as well. So that is Harbor Haven. I stitched that on 36 count Peaceful Waters by Silk Weaver. And that is done and ready to go to the framer. So that was, that was an odyssey, that one. That one took a while. Isn't that weird? Again, I, there, I think there were clouds charted as well. I didn't stitch the clouds. I let the fabric do the work for me. Uh, so the second one is the, um, the Linens and Threads 2021 Free Mystery Sampler. Uh, the charts are free. They're still out there if you want to get them. And Linens and, thre um, linens and Threads has a Facebook group. If you belong to that Facebook group, they'll link you over to the free chart section. You can also just go out to the website and get the charts if you're not on Facebook. Again, they're free. You just have to kit it up yourself. You're whatever fabric you want to use, whatever colors you want to use. They've started their 2021 free stitch along, which is Anyway, it's based on these tiles. These colors are amazing. I've been downloading the charts. I have not been able to to keep up with it. I think I started like January, and then I just I'm I'm all over the place. I have so much I want to stitch, and I'm and I'm like in this kind of like start all the things mode. Anyway, this is the 2021. I did keep up with this every single month as the chart came out. I finished it, so it was done. Waiting for the next month, and. I decided to, it was called Friends and Family, I decided not to put any initials in because I just loved it. The only initials I put in were my own at the bottom. So here it is. Again, washing out like crazy. It's darkening this up. Um, 
I did it all in pinks and pastels. You can see there are my initials 2020. So it's all pink, pastel pink. The white part is, um, or what appears to be white is the Gentle Arts Cotton Candy thread. I used, I used the DMC Diamond, is that what they call it? Diamond for the silver metallic. And then I used a hand dyed by Rolanda for the pink ones. And I just, as I was going along, I placed it however I thought it would look nice in that particular motif. And it's done. Done. So that was my second big finish, my third big finish. And I'm very proud of this. Be one, because I finished it inside of a year. I finished it in December. Two, because it's my first memorabilia ever. Three, I, I don't know if I knew this at the time that I chose the fabric, but the fabric is spectacular. It just showcases the design. Um, and four, Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World graciously shared her conversion, the chart, which I don't have now because I uh, forwarded it on to a friend who also wanted to do this chart. The chart has, um, maybe I'll throw a picture in here, the, um, the Snow Queen in the chart is blonde, but Julie shared her red hair conversion, you know, any, with gingers. Anytime we can convert something to red hair, we do. So here she is. Snow Queen, my memorabilia. And she was my Sunday stitch for all of 2020. I think I only missed two Sundays with her for um, other commitments. But there she is. And there's that gorgeous red hair conversion that Julie did and shared with everyone. And I love it. I just love it. So this one I am sending out to Jill Rinsel <clears throat> to have it framed. But look at the, the beading. I mean, these col the fabric color is looking pretty true, actually. You know, it's that midnight blue. And like I said, I didn't think at the time, I wanted, I knew I wanted a dark color. I just didn't think it would impact the piece so much, but it really, really did. And a lot of it has to do with the color wheel and how colors play off of each other. And yeah. 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 So my next, my next mirabilia is going to be. I have Lady of the Flag, I have Queen of Freedom, <clears throat> and I have this one, which I really want to do. I really want to do, but I'm working on Justice for All, so I feel like maybe I'll start this one when I finish that one. I really love her, though. These charts are incredible. Imagine having that kind of mind where you're, you're like, this is what I'm going to create today. Okay. Nope. Here's your submarine. Remember that one? Okay. Small finishes. <clears throat> I showed you salon. I'm going to do the, the one that has the words are the negative space. I believe I showed you this chart the last time. <laughs> Ten months ago that we talked, <coughs> um, and it's the Brenda Gervais, but first coffee. She's supposed to have a hat on. Of course, I changed her to curly ginger hair. Backed it with the coffee bean fabric. I may have shown this to you already finished. I'm not sure. There's that. And then here's my... Oh, I love this one. My friend... Um, she's also part of my stitching group, Arlene, from Works by ABC. She's a designer, and I'll link her, um, I'll link her, her Etsy shop below. Um, she's also a historian. I, 
she knows the stories and she's a researcher. She's a math teacher. <laughs> she's, she's just an incredible human being. Um, but this was a freebie that she did uh, late spring last year. And I couldn't wait to stitch it. So I had finished the stitching last year, but this year I, I finished it to put it out for MLK Day. This remains true and will continue to remain true. Um, thread work primitives. I put buttons on the end and I finished it with this little pretty little fabric, DT fabric on the back. And then these were the two from the Brenda Gervais Love Notes uh, collection that I finished. Hope you finished. Little boy and girl birds be mine and I finished it with this black and white fabric my charm and then you know I had to <laughs> you would ask what was wrong with me if I hadn't love you Alante and again change the girl red curly hair uh, kitted it from stash put the little felt heart in the corner She's cute. Same fabric on the back. So that's that. Okay. Um, I will do a very little bit of haul if my memory's filling up. <laughs> um, actually, this is going to be a new start. Or maybe I'll start it so that I can call it a whip and put it on my new bingo board. Scarlet House. The little deed sampler. I just picked this up today. Look at that little basket of flowers. I love it. I have been, I know I have one or two around here somewhere, but I picked up the Summer House Stitch Works Fragments of Time. Three and four of these are right up my alley. Boy. I had never seen this one before. Tiny Modernist Halloween Skeletons. Isn't it cute? Listen, you can never plan too far. Ooh. Um, you can never plan too far ahead. I did get... I don't think I had this. And I'm shocked because I love it. But maybe I didn't love it at the time. Who knows? Your taste change. It's Brenda Gervais. Randall Flagg. The lady on the stool. I picked up <laughs> Lady Liberty where she's holding the flag. I think I might already have it though. But you know what? Think about needleworkers. They're so great. They're like, have it, bring it back in exchange for something else. Okay, and then um, a few more things. If you haven't seen this by now, uh, go Google. YouTube search for anybody who's showing anything about this book because incredible. I sat at Needleworkers paging through it over and over and over again. It's incredible. I have been eyeing this one and I kept talking myself out of it. And then, I don't know, I just felt like I... It is Needlework Press, Needlework Press, Jane Lenderleaf, 1838. And I guess that's the original, and then they recharted it. Isn't that gorgeous? Incredible. Uh, this is by Samplers Not Forgotten, and I believe the photo on the front is the antique. I don't think it's the rechart. Anne Wright, 1726. Look at that. The Scarlet House, Sarah Jackson. The photo is a little dark. It's on dolphin. The fabric is dolphin. 36 count dolphin. 
but I just really loved it. I don't know if I would do it on that dark of a fabric, but I like the tone of the fabric. Again, uh, Sarah Jackson, Scarlet House. This is A Sister Remembered, Agnes Wardrop, circa 1826 by Mary Wind Farm. You know what sold me on this? The house. Look at that house. I want to live in that house. Something new. Not stitchy related, but I know a lot of stitchers do this. Um, there's this thing going on in my stitching group. We have a lot of people who quilt. I am not a quilter. I like piecing the tops together. I like putting the borders around it, but I've never quilted. And during the height of the pandemic, for some reason, and I'm pretty sure that I need to um, hold a few other people other than me accountable for getting me into this, I started piecing quilts together. And because I'm an immediate gratification person, I didn't want to send it out to anybody and wait for it to come back, I quilted it myself. I repeat, I am not a quilter. And it's funny, we were talking about this today because I, I would say that I have quilted. I am still not a quilter. When I see what other people do, it is clear that I am not a quilter. So I believe that going forward, I still enjoy the piecing part. I will continue to do that and start sending my tops out to be quilted, especially if they're gifts for other people where I, you know, I want them to have something really nice. Um, but my piecing has gotten better. So it all started with this conversation one night on Zoom about the jelly roll race. Have you heard of this, the jelly roll race? You take a jelly roll. Let me show you what jelly roll is. So a jelly roll is like this. Quilting people are like, really? Are you going this elementary on us? Yes. Yes, I am. Because it was, this was me like eight months ago. It's a, it's just a, a roll of fabric, right? This is my latest purchase. And there's a video out there. <laughs> I'll link it below if you're interested in giving it a whirl. You take the strips of fabric and you sew them end to end to end and then you fold them in half and then you cut it and you sew it in half and then it. There's a whole thing, right? They were like, yeah, 45 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Like three and a half hours later, I'm still sewing and cutting and folding and da da da. Anyway, I got there. Um, so I did make a quilt because like I said, I'm an immediate gratification person and I want to wait. So I will show you, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this now. <clears throat> so the first one I did is the jelly roll race that my stitching group got me started on. And it's really, you just, I'll never be able to show this here. I'll include some pictures. But basically, you just sew all these fabrics together. When you cut them in half, eventually they end up staggering like this, right? So this is my very first quilt ever. And the fabric line is called All Hallows Eve by Moda. I can't remember the designer for Moda. Fig tree, maybe? I think my fig tree. So this is my first one and I did like a little straight line crosshatch quilting on the back. You can see I have a problem sewing straight lines. Now I also did this on my little teeny, I have a little teeny brother machine that is not meant for quilting. It's meant for putting together a little small finishes and it was, I had it for years. I got it for Christmas one year. It did a great job. But trying to fit a huge quilt through that little small space to get it to quilt was, words were, words were had also. <laughs> I have one of those plastic things though in my carpet so my chair can roll around easily so I can when I'm pushing this quilt through the machine, my chair is rolling back. So I'm like 
stretched out like this trying to quilt, like zombie quilting. And then I would like scooch myself back in again. And then push back, 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 back. And scooch back. It's no wonder, right? You don't have the proper, people who, who are professional quilters or, or have been quilting for a long time, they know, they know. They're like, you need the proper tools, right? So that's the first one I did. And then I got wise and I went and ordered wheels that have locking casters. <laughs> so I didn't have that problem to deal with. So the second one I did, um, this was a fat quarter shop pattern. It was a free pattern. The fabric line is <sighs> Marcia Stenowell. Again, Moda. I'm not sure who the designer is for Moda. <clears throat> but, so this was my second one. Um, a little smaller than the first. Thank God. And I just quilted straight lines. Again, riddled with errors. Don't care on my couch. And I'm completely subscribed to the approach of a finished quilt is better than a perfect quilt. So that's my second quilt that I did for Christmas, my Christmas quilt. Now I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to continue to piece. And for the, oh, and then I got a new sewing machine. For, I got one for myself for Christmas as part of Black Friday. I got a screaming deal on it. Um, so now it's easier, but I still don't enjoy it in the way that I enjoy stitching. So this is my third quilt. So this one is in process still. It's not done yet. Um, this fabric line is called Daybreak, also Moda. And so that's the fabric line. I'll have to, I think Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch was also kind of partly responsible for me, for this venture. Um, cause she would like have videos outside of her just like flipping open these quilts in slow-mo and the quilts would just wave down and she's a beautiful quilter. I, I don't know how she does it, but she is an incredible quilter. I know she can go to a studio where they have quilt, like long arm quilting machines and do it, but <clears throat> there's nothing like that around here. But this is the one. So this is in process called Daybreak. Um... Also, I believe, a f what pattern was this? It's called the log, uh, rail, 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 rail fence. It was a free pattern, but I also got it from a YouTube video, which I will link below. But so, um, I do like the border on this one. But I'm just doing like echo quilting around the seams. I'm not doing anything too terribly elaborate at the back. If anybody knows me, knows that I love a nice paisley. Look at that. Paisley, paisley, paisley. Love it. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I was quilting this last night. I was. And I was just like, oh, will this ever end? So I find it very interesting that when I'm working on these, that I don't have that level of like, it'll get done when it gets done. It's a process. It's a journey. I don't have that. I'm like, I want it done. I want it done and on my couch so I can use it. So maybe it's that there's like a functional piece of it that I'm like, yes, I want to be able to use it. I need it on my couch. I need to get it done. And so it's sort of like, it doesn't have the same level of enjoyment for me as, although I enjoy the piecing part. Um, but I will say in the end, despite having said that, um, there is nothing like curling up underneath a quilt that you've made or someone has made for you. There's nothing. I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like all the feels in a blanket. It's just, it's incredible. So I will continue to do some simple where, where I can. Um, 
but I want to make a nice large quilt for our bed and we have a king size bed. I will not be able to handle that and nor would I want to. I want to send that one out. So that will go out. Um, and my, um, my sister asked that I make a quilt for her. Um, I found she loves things like, like clover honey and clover and she's just, you know, country, country clover is what I call her. And which is funny because she lives outside of DC. So she lives in the heart of the city. Um, so I will, I found this and I saw that Vana had made a quilt out of this fabric line, this uh, clover meadow fabric line. So I'm going to make her a, a quilt, but I will send that out because it will be a gift to her. It won't be sitting on my couch. Um, and then Darren's niece is graduating from high school this year. So I want to make her a quilt that she can take to college if she ends up going and she isn't remote. Either way, she's going to get a quilt because if she's not, if she's remote, she could still use it in her room <clears throat> while she's studying or whatever. So, um, but I want her to have something, you know, special handmade. And then <laughs> the piece de resistance is that every time I'm in here quilting or working on a quilt or piecing something together, Daphne comes in and she just loves to lay in the fabric scraps. But she really loves it when I'm quilting because if I have the quilt hanging off to the side, she'll lay down on it. And I said to Darren, I said, you know, she really loves quilts. And so I went out and I bought some dog fabric, <laughs> bones and bark and, um, and I'm going to make her a quilt. But it's going to be small enough that I can handle it easily. It's not going to be huge, but it'll just be something for her to snuggle up with from mom. Okay, I think that's enough, right? I thought it was going to be short. It's not. I'm just blah, 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 blah. I mean, um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and do these on a monthly basis. I'm hoping that I got my mojo back. It's feeling good. So I was just exhausted for an entire year. Did you ever get that way? And if you know what? If you are, take a break. Relax. Rest. You're allowed. That's something I learned. So, okay, that's it for now. I hope to see you next time. Uh, thanks for, for bearing through all of this with me. And I will uh, talk to you soon. Until then, take care. Peace.